Hey adventurers, welcome to Southern Illinois. Today we are going to Snake Road. I've got Z with me over there. Uh, Ellie is uh, down the road over there looking at some stuff. But you know who's also with me? This little decays brown snake. We just found it uh, on this on this road here as we were driving uh, to the very famous Snake Road. So one of the nice things is we you know we do like. Uh, taking a close look at some of these snakes, but on Snake Road, everything's protected and you're not allowed to pick the snakes up or, or touch them. So it's nice to get a close look at a case brown snake, help it off the road so uh, a tractor or another car doesn't run it over, um, but also allows us to get some sweet shots. So stay tuned. Uh, this is a good sign. I'm sure that there will be a lot more uh, snakes to see today. So let's get flipping. <laughs> So, hey guys, we made it to the famous uh, Snake Road. Uh, like I said, this is like the one time that I'll actually tell you where I am because it is so protected. You can't handle the snakes. You can't touch them. No collecting or anything. And the rangers do often sort of come by on the trail too. But I want to show you a little secret spot here. Uh, if we pop in right into here or to here, we may get a glimpse at something pretty neat. Let's see. Gotta get my flashlight. But if you look all the way down there, there is a gray tree frog. I don't know which of the two species it is because I have both here and a green tree frog. So <laughs> very cool. Just at the gate, always check it. Check these little these little spots. Uh, the other one, the other one could have something in it. You never know. Um, but nope, no tree frogs in there. But a little neat sort of sort of trick. But we're gonna get walking and we're gonna see uh, if snakes are moving. Also, a great place to see raccoons if you can find them. There he is. There's a small group of, I think, four of them, but they kind of scurried up that tree really quick. And now they're, they're all the way up the top there. So, yeah, lumbering around. Oh, just climbing up really quick. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to want to do when you come to Snake Road is shine in all the cracks and crevices along the bluffs. This is where you'll find a lot of snakes that are starting to brewmate, starting to find places to shelter for the winter. So right in this crack here, we have our very first cottonmouth. We will see more of these and they will be on the road. But this is our first one in a crack here. And of course, some of these bigger cracks, sometimes they're much easier to see. Looking in here, here's a nice big cottonmouth on the bottom here. And, uh, and if we look up a little bit more, uh, we can see that we have uh, a third one. All right, so that is three cotton mouths and one decays brown snake so far. But uh, we should, uh, we're just starting. We're just starting here. There is, the weather is perfect. I think it's in the 60s, but it's supposed to warm up into the 80s today. And so it's really good snake weather. And I'm sorry that I can't look at the camera much. Because, uh, of course, all along the ground here, we could find more cottonmouths and other things. And I want to make sure that, uh, in fact, oh my god, okay. As I'm telling you, we could find more. There is another cottonmouth in there. A little, uh, it's a young one. Not quite a baby, but definitely probably uh, like a year old or something. So really cool. <laughs> Just, I'm telling you, so that's snake number uh, five today. Um, so stay tuned. I'm sure we'll see a lot more. All right. This is snake number six. I think you can see the head of it right in there. All right. Zeev just spotted our first snake out and about, or I guess our second snake out and about. Uh, up there in the trees is a rough green snake. This is probably the most arboreal snake in the area, and we often find them up in the vegetation like this. We may see some crossing the road today. They're fairly common in the area, uh, but you never know what the day is going to hold. 
they are incredibly beautiful and really well camouflaged and are really hard to see. So like, good job, Z, spotting this guy. Well, it looks like snakes are finally starting to move across the road, and this is a big one. This is a huge cottonmouth, maybe the biggest one we've seen all weekend. Look at the size of it. And, you know, they do this really recognizable pose where they stretch themselves out on the road and they tip their head up like that. So really easy to identify. And, wow, it is just a gigantic specimen. So really cool to see that the snakes are finally starting to move. We have our first salamander of the day. Tucked in there. Oh, he's going away. But tucked in there is a cave salamander. Oh, bye-bye little cave salamander. All orange, lots of spots on him. A good looking salamander. So, you know, we're here on an off day. It's, it's Monday. You can see there's no one behind me and no one in front of me. Uh, but that is starting to change a bit, especially every time we find a snake or find people who found a snake. There's still, whoa, ho, ho, oh my God. Oh, I, you gotta be careful here. I almost stepped on that little cotton mouth right there. It's a tiny little baby. You can even see the yellow tail there. Uh, I might not be able to do this recording uh, if I'm gonna make, start making mistakes like that. So kind of crazy, but you see like, this is my find. Nobody else is around me. Uh, but of course, in a lot of the other clips, uh, you'll see there are a lot of people. So I'm gonna get down low, take, a, take some photos of this guy, take some video of it, and, uh, and then we'll keep walking and hopefully we find something else. So check out the pattern on this young cottonmouth. They really do stand out. And then of course, when we get to the end, there is that yellow tail. They use that to sort of hunt their prey. They kind of shake it around, make um, whatever they're gonna eat, think that it's a worm or something. And then they strike and they these guys are of course venomous. Uh, but really lovely colors, really, really pretty. Just kind of sitting here. Uh, and of course, right in the middle of Snake Road. You're probably gonna think that some of these shots are staged because twice now I've started to talk to you and boom, there's a snake and a cotton mouth. Yeah, such a unsuspecting time. Well, I just, you have to believe me, this isn't staged at all. The snakes are just moving and I just happen to to find them as I'm as I'm trying to share this day with you. So. I'm like really worried <laughs> I'm gonna find another one. Uh, I've seen them under uh, that smaller log before, so um, they're definitely out and about. Uh, and I have a feeling that once we get a little bit further to the swampy area, there's gonna be a lot on the move. We're coming up on a really nice swampy area. Um, and you can start seeing on the right here, we have lots of, of water, lots of swamps and uh, you know, all the duckweed is making it green. And this is a really good place to find some more cottonmouth and some of the bigger ones. It also happens to be really nice for uh, tree frogs, cricket frogs, leopard frogs. So there's a good chance that we will find another couple things coming through here. Um, I'm a little surprised there isn't anything on the road already but they might have had a bit of a push. Oh, here we go. I got one right here. You can see that, look, it's all covered in duckweed. Okay, I'm gonna switch cameras so you can see it better. There we go, another cottonmouth. Look at that. Just, it is just covered in that green duckweed there. Really cool to see. This is our 10th snake of the day as well. So, awesome. And now, usually where there's one, we will find a couple others. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's one coming through the grass over here or maybe one that has already gone through and is on the other side. But it might just be that one for now. But I have a feeling that we're going to have a lot more of these snakes uh, coming through here in a little bit. I wanted to come back to this spot because the other day this was we had a bat here. And it was right in this crevice. And it looks like he's still here. Now, there's a good chance, I, I would be surprised if he, if he stayed there uh, 
for just a couple days. He probably took off and came back and just really liked this spot, so came back to it. But it's looking like another tricolored bat. Um, so really neat to see. Good one for the um, out here uh, in the eastern United States. So neat, a bat for our visit on Snake Road. Um, yeah, you never know what you're going to find in these little cracks and crevices. All right, just got another snake for the day. Look at that. It is a little decays brown snake. We saw one this, this morning, got a better look at it. Um, he's going backwards. I don't know why. Usually the snakes are going uh, to that side of the road. Um, but he... Might have uh, given him a little bit of a fright too. Yeah, maybe. He didn't turn around though. He's, he was facing that way when I noticed him. Um, but yeah, these guys, I mean, they really do look like sticks here. Would have been easy for us to accidentally step on it. But it's got a nice, nice pattern to it. It's always nice to come and try to take a little bit of a closer look. Double check, it's not a red belly snake. This pattern is really muted on this guy. Um, but definitely feels like uh, decays to me. <laughs> Like I mentioned, this swamp right here is a great place for green tree frogs. And of course, we have one right tucked in there. That little cute little guy, really easy. Um, and luckily in here, they're easy to identify. They're the only all green frog that we have. Oh, check it out. New snake for the day. Oh, this is so cool. This is a plain bellied water snake. Great to see it here. Oh, so cool, look at that. Okay, this spot is just great up the road. We have an armadillo. And somebody said that they had just seen a green, rough green snake. Oh, Outdoor Michelle, that's her Instagram handle. She just spotted it here. Oh, look at that. Really lovely. And the armadillo tramping off over there. So, Two new snakes right in this spot. Oh, it's doing its little head wiggle. That's cool. Nice. Now, since this one's so cooperative, if you're able to look close at the scales, you'll see that there's like little lines in them. That's because these have keeled scales. And it's one of the main differences that we tell the rough green snake apart from the smooth green snake. Now, in this area, we only have rough green snakes, so it's easy, but if you were in an area that had both, that's what you kind of look for. All right, looks like there's more snakes on the road. These folks have found some cotton mouths. Let's see, how many you got here? One disappearing, and then there's one. Nope, oh, see it right there. There it goes. Oh, I see two right there. Yep, there they are moving. Nice, very cool. I spotted this one. Here is another rough green snake. Look at that. That's a nice size one too. Yeah. But these guys are on the move today. One more cotton mouth for the day. Things are starting to look pretty good. We just hit our 20th snake with that cotton mouth and it is about 145. So there's still a lot of daylight left and there's a lot more things that hopefully we'll get to see. Um, but like always, I'm looking around. You never know. I, you know, I almost stepped on that rough green snake and, uh, and that cotton mouth, that baby cotton mouth earlier. So stay tuned and hopefully we'll have, you know, a bunch more to show you. You know, it's kind of cool. You can spot <laughs> these cotton mouths from quite a distance because they are quite large and heavy snakes. So you should be able to see that one up there crossing the road now. They also have a very unique posture where their mouths are kind of always sticking up. So, should be able to see it a little bit better now, now that we're closer, but nice big one again. We really are getting some nice movement now. He's got a little bit of a tail shake. Nice. Trying to be all big and tough, and you know, he kind of is, so bye-bye. Snake is giving us an example of what all the snakes are here to do. They are trying to find 
really good spots to spend the winter and in these cracks along the bluffs is just the perfect spot for them. So he sniffing it out, it's gonna find a nice place to wait out the cold months. All right, excellent. One more rough green snake for the day. This one is just hanging out in the middle of the path. I always have such a hard time getting focused shots on these guys. So there, oh, that's pretty good. Very nice to see, just kind of moving pretty slowly through the road today. One more snake. Oh, nice. Hanging out in the water down there. Oh, yeah. There he is. Now this is actually pretty neat. Rummaging uh, back here behind me is an armadillo. And they used to like not even be north of the Rio Grande. And it's not until like the last hundred years that they started been moving more and more northern. And you can even get them in central Illinois now, but this is the first year that I've ever seen armadillos here at Snake Road. I've seen a carcass before, but they are just everywhere. This is the second one we've seen today, but we had, I think, five yesterday and maybe six the day before. And it's really neat to sort of see nature changing in front of you. And we're not really sure, um, or the scientific community isn't really sure why these armadillos are moving more and more north, um, but they're doing really well. And, you know, they don't really seem to be, to my knowledge, I don't think that they're affecting the ecosystem that much. Um, and like they just kind of end up fitting in but it's neat to see you know that this place changes and and certainly some of it is affected by humans uh obviously this road wouldn't physically be here if it wasn't for humans um but that's a more natural shift in the chain that happens um and every time i come to snake road it is a little bit different because there are tropical storms that end up getting this far north and so trees will fall down and things will shift around and things will move and it'll be a little different every time. So very exciting to see that armadillo. And, uh, and obviously it's just a lovely fall day. Just the color uh, here is amazing. And uh, hopefully we'll have lots more to share with you. All right, passing back through, uh, we already pointed these guys out in the cracks here to you earlier. Um, and just in the, the leaves here, there is another cottonmouth that's making his way on up. So that one's definitely a new one. And, uh, you know, if there's, if there's one, there's, there's probably more around too. Check it out. We just got another species on the road. This is certainly a tiny one, but this is a Western ribbon snake and just such vibrant colors. And that little spot on that head is one of the uh, nice field mark for them too. Now, the Zivanelli, they're up there, so I'm gonna keep my distance a little bit so it doesn't take off before they get a good look, but very nice to see. All right, so pretty excellent day so far. 31 snakes and counting. We still got a good amount of daylight left, but I wanted to take a moment uh, to tell you about a non-for-profit. So as some of you know who've been watching, I've been trying to give $10,000 away to all these different non profits that are related to the to the videos that uh, we put together here on Check Your Natural History. Some of you know that I am really into bird watching. You know, I always have my binoculars with me, which obviously is great for the birds, also good for the snakes out here. Um, Southern Illinois can be a great space to go bird watching. We've seen plenty of Carolina wrens, blue jays, and uh, some, some warblers are actually passing through. Lots of yellow rumps at the moment. And you know, I really, I'm, I'm really connected uh, to Illinois birding because this is actually the state that I grew up in and where I started sort of my bird watching adventure. So we're going to give some money to the Illinois Audubon Society to help protect some of the amazing birds that we've seen today and some of the great birds that we see on some of our other adventures. The details down in the description if you'd like to learn more about them. All right, this is your chance, Eve. Catch an armadillo. A little blurb about these armadillos here is uh, this is the nine banded armadillo. Now that is 
not always to be taken as a rule. These guys can have anywhere from 7 to 11 bands. So, you know, right in the middle, the average there, I guess, would be 9. But he is digging away, looking for probably grubs uh, to, to eat and enjoy. Oh, check it out. We found a little toad right here on the trail hopping around. This is the first toad that we have seen this weekend. He is pretty happy, pretty hoppy. Not really standing still for me to get that great of footage, but nice to see our first toad of the weekend. All right. Oh, now of course he's staying still. All right. Bye-bye little toady. All right, Zeev just spotted another ribbon snake. This one he says is really big. Well, I don't the other one. I don't see it yet. Hold on a second. All right. So, take a look. You see there's right in front of me the root that goes straight in. Yeah, oh, oh I got it. I'm on it now. Let's zoom in a little bit there. Oh, this is a beautiful one. You really see that orange color on it. Oh, it's moving. Moving. People up there have another species for us. Hopefully it sticks around. They found a black racer. All right, let's take a look at this racer. Oh, all the flies. I'm honest sometimes. Where are we looking? Here, come, on, come over here. Look. Oh, nice. Down, it? It's tucked in. Yeah, it's tucked in. You can't see its head. Tucked in there. <laughs> kind of looks like a piece of tire. It's all black. Yep. Oh, but it's moving oh, now. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a black yeah. racer. He's, he's over here. He's, he's, nice. here. he's right there. He's coming up this oh, way. coming up. You might come right up on it. Very exciting. That's fifth species for me. There, he's headed back now. Today. There's the head. Headed back towards the sun. There he Oh, there he goes. Oh, I've been a nice snake. He'll probably grab you right back. Yeah. Yes, I would many times. Yeah. That, yes, just strike over and over and over. Yeah, racers seem to be racers no matter where in the country they are. Well, the snakes aren't stopping. We have another one of the common ones. Here is that good old cotton mouth oh, giving us a nice display. Show us what you're working with there. You can see those fangs sticking out. Because this is, of course, one of the main venomous species in the area. Show us what you got. Yeah, look at that. And you'll see, we actually, they'll start wiggling their tail, too. If you get too close. Well, not, maybe not this time, but he wagged it a little bit. So, very cool to see. Yeah, really get to see his fangs well. Well, there's still daylight. And there's still road to walk. So we're gonna continue and hopefully get something new. All right, we've got another snake here, but this is the common one, the cottonmouth. One more for the day, giving us a nice display as we keep uh, walking down the road here. So we're starting to run out of time. We're probably on our last pass of the road during daylight hours, and we haven't seen a that many snakes in the last hour. You know, that one cottonmouth and maybe one other. So we might, this might be the end of the day. And we're just a tad short of 40 snakes, which is certainly good. But there are some people who come out here to Snake Road and they can get hundreds of snakes in a day. Now that is certainly a rare occurrence, but it could happen. So I'm pretty happy with how many snakes we've seen today, but uh, but we were actually thinking with the conditions that it might have been just a little bit better. So hopefully we'll have another trip out next year or something and we'll have one of those huge days where the snakes are just like carpeting the floors. So, but now, the night is young. The, the night is young, as Zeev said, it's not even nighttime yet. Right. The night's very young right now. But I we're gonna, yeah, 
So pretty soon it'll get dark and we're gonna go for road, do a little bit of road cruising, not on the snake road itself, it's closed for motor vehicles, but in the area. Maybe a couple more things are gonna be out and about moving around. You never know what you're gonna find. And we're certainly gonna make a stop back on the road at night to see if there are any nocturnal snakes that wanna cross while well, there's not as many people here. Thanks to the generosity of some local herpers who have a lot more experience in the area than we do, they've given us some great advice to look for stuff or where to look for stuff after dark. So hopefully we can, uh, hopefully their advice pans out. Yeah. And thank you to them for giving it to us, for you know, sharing that information with us. And uh, yeah, let's see what we find. Yeah, fingers crossed. Oh, nice. Check it out. The day is not quite over yet. A beautiful Western ribbon snake and a pretty good sized one too. Such a colorful, pretty snake. You can see it's got that nice orange stripe down the back. Very, My very cool. I can't pick up how orange that stripe is. Yeah. Kind of cool. Two snakes meeting each other. That is a baby cotton mouth that the ribbon snake just revealed for us. He's turning around, getting out of there. I'm just taking a bunch of pictures. Yeah, very, very cool. I'm following this ribbon. You can showcase that cotton. Is that good? I think if I've counted you? correctly, oh, yeah. at me. That's we are I'm now on. at uh, 40 snakes for the day. Yeah, for very us it's exciting. closer to 50 or 60. Oh, wow. You guys have done really well. Yeah, that guy actually struck at me. Crazy. Little monkey. Huh. You're funny. Oh, looks like it's disappearing. Down this hole. There it goes. You would never have known that there was a ribbon yeah. snake there. You know, I turned my back for a second, and these folks find one more snake. Right. Oh, another, another juvenile cottonmouth. Oh, baby, yeah. Right, right there. Well, what an amazing day. 40 plus snakes. I'll have to look at the final count later. We are almost back to where we parked. Um, but like I said, we're gonna go out Road cruising, look for a couple more things. So don't, don't tune away just yet. My goodness, folks, it's a little blurry there. Check out this snake. Oh, wow. This is one of the hardest snakes to find out here. This is a copperhead, and what a beautiful one indeed. Good sized one, too. Now, this was, was this your, your number favorite target. number one target? This yeah. Absolutely, my biggest target. We've been looking every night pretty much since we've gotten here. Tonight is our last night. And finally, we got one. So copperheads are pretty easy to identify. They have these nice sort of Hershey Kiss markings on the side. They're generally all brown. Um, and they do have coppery heads, although you can't really see it from this angle. But this is one of three different venomous species that we can find out here. We've already seen a lot of the northern cottonmouth, and uh, the last one would be the timber rattlesnake, which we're still hoping to see tonight. Um, and you know, conditions are pretty good, so who knows? It's such a great sight. We're gonna let him continue on his way, and just like that, he just kind of disappears into the grass. He right in, look at that. Oh my God, I just see the leaves moving. Yeah. And I, I have no idea where he is anymore. All right, Zeev just spotted this little uh, green, green, green tree frog here. Now, I do not know why he chose this plant. You can see there are so many thorns on it. Now, he's obviously small enough to, that he's kind of sitting uh, in between them. But still, I would think uh, there are more comfortable uh, perches. But Another species for our walk now. That is a southern leopard frog. 
We've seen a couple of these on the other days, but it's nice to see one kind of up close. So, well, there he goes, somewhere lost in there. We're gonna keep on looking for things out at night, so stay tuned. Oh, what'd you find? A little rough green sticking in this branch right here. Look at that. Oh, excellent. Look at that. That's oh, so I can cool. see it. Ow. <laughs> Stinging nettle, yeah. Oh, be careful. Oh, man. Oh, it's a nice, cool. nice position, too. Yeah. Oh, the leaves are blowing in the way. Look oh, at that. Oh, off he goes. Oh, is he moving? He is moving. Oh, man. That's okay. We woke him up by accident. That's sorry, buddy. If we well, back away from it, he might stay yeah, still. He's, he's staying there for a bit. Well, that's really cool. I mean, we saw a bunch during the day, so I don't have any new information for you. But, you know, shining the trees at night, it's a great idea. So, sweet. Can you, you, you Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know, one of the really cool things is you saw such great camouflage here during the day, but you see that it really sticks out uh, at nighttime with the light on it. We're obviously seeing we have a view of its belly this time and so um, those belly scales shine at a much sort of brighter color and it really does stick out <laughs> so we did find a bunch during the day but sometimes these guys are easier to find at night all right this is kind of cool you can look back there oh it's really hard to see but we have we have a bobcat look at that They're definitely not super easy to come across. One more really interesting mammal species for our trip. That's really cool. I don't think you'd be too bothered by us either. No. Slinking back off into the undergrowth. Oh, there he, oh there he is. We get a little eye shine back at us every now and then. Oh, very cool. Let's leave him for yeah. his endeavors. Nice. We'll back to ours. So it looks like that tricolored bat is still <laughs> hanging out here, even though it is nighttime. So he must have uh, he must have been sleeping here for a couple days. Yeah, I mean he's definitely still alive. Um, so you know, I don't know much about bat behavior, but if you if you do, please uh, give me a little note in the comments on, you know, is he going to stay here for a long time or just until conditions are different? Or is he going to, you know, spend the winter here or something like that? So I'd love, uh, I'd love for some educational uh, comments if you know anything. All right, well, Zeev and I are just finishing the very last stretches of Snake Road from a fantastic day. We had seven species of snake, a ton of frogs, and a good set of mammals, too. I mean, that bobcat yeah. at the end was certainly was really cool. a cool surprise. Well, anyway, here's my sign-off. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'm Greg. This is Zeev. And we'll see you in the field.